Welcome to How Preschool Teachers Do It. This is Allison Kentos. I am an early childhood educator. And this is Cindy Tarabush. I am an early childhood consultant. This podcast is for parents and early childhood professionals. Let our experience and research-based knowledge become your guide. Hi, preschool peeps. Hi, peeps. We're, we're sort of <laughs> laughing already. We didn't even start. <laughs> we're sort of laughing because we were talking about this whole shouting out places in the United States and around the world and how there are times when we just aren't sure how to pronounce things. So I'm going to start with a disclaimer and then Allison's going to take it. If we mispronounce mm-hmm. your region, city, location, feel free to let us know that. We're we're doing the best we can, but and we are obviously not great pronouncers. <laughs> no. And then we'll re-shout out you with the proper pronunci- pronunciation. Yes. We will try. Because <laughs> I feel really bad that I do not know how to pronounce this place, Kerala, India. Maybe you're right. I might be right. I don't know. Hello. But yeah, Kerala, India. So hi, peeps from there. And Brooklyn, New York. Brooklyn. <laughs> so Brooklyn, that's where my son lives. You keep listening, <laughs> right? I visit Brooklyn. I see, go to Brooklyn. Uh, it's a it's a two bridges and a hike from here. Yeah, it's a hike. <laughs> <laughs> it's a two hike. bridges, expensive tolls and a hike from mm-hmm. here. That's why, Allison, don't go there. <laughs> but but my son lives I in Brooklyn, know. and it's a lovely place. Right? Yeah, it's really nice there. Yeah, he lives not too far from Prospect Park. He's not like well, it really. He that's where he walks. He goes. Yeah. He's really not far at all from Prospect Park, and he he often walks through the park to get exercise. So nice. Yeah. Nice. Okay. On to the topic. Anyway, anyway, <laughs> that's, that's my personal stuff. But yeah. on to the topic. Hey. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> so we, as you can tell from the title, we're going to talk about children actually planning their dramatic play, mm-hmm. which recently we've read quite a bit about that. This seems to be a really important strategy for children to do this planning, which is not news. This is part of the high scope method or high scope approach to learning and teaching where children plan what they're going to do. Then they do it. And then we all review it and see how that went. The, the process in the high scope curriculum is called plan, do, review. But in, if you're not using high scope, it can still be a really valuable thing to do with children, to give them time to sit and plot and plan what they want to do, particularly for dramatic play. There's an article, I'm looking to see who this is from. There is an article, uh, it's from the Milne Library. M-I-L-N-E, here we go with pronunciation again, the Milne Library. Um, And it talks about introducing talking time to children as a really good use for large group time to say to children, our morning meeting, we're going to like say hello, we're going to acknowledge who's here and who's not. And then we're going to give you all the children talking time to talk about what you would like to do during dramatic play today, if you're going to go play over there. So you can have children. I imagine talking time could be, think about what you want to do during free play today. Mm -hmm. Those of you who are going to go build with blocks can talk over here. here. Those of you who are going to go to dramatic play can go over here and plan. Those of you who are going to go to art can go over here and plan to have, give them a talking time to talk out their ideas now, the, the article I'm looking at talks yeah. specifically about dramatic play, which I think we have often thought of as solely um, spontaneous. Yes, I think that is true. That's what we think, that they just go over there and they do their thing and that's it. And they're, But really, I think there should be more planning when it comes to that. Because I think if you don't plan it, then you might have four children over there doing four different things. And that's okay, but then maybe there's a way that they could work together and do something too. It gives them a chance to share ideas, inspire each other's creativity, use communication skills and and negotiation. Yeah, and to work as a team, like to cooperate with people. It's right. So dramatic play can sometimes be spontaneous maybe, but it doesn't always have to be happenstance. Like, you know, a couple of kids go over to dramatic play. Right. And they decide it's a restaurant. Now everybody's in a restaurant. Right. Yeah. (laughs) But maybe if they sat ahead of time 
And maybe a couple of children said, let's play restaurant. Maybe another child said, well, I want to play uh, superheroes. Mm -hmm. Maybe they can figure out a way to have the superheroes at the restaurant. Right. Right. And I feel like it, it's not only teaching like cooperation, but I think it teaches like respect, like, Hey, you want to play restaurant? I'm cool with that. You go do your thing, but I want to play superheroes. So you either have to decide, am I just going to have space for this person to do superheroes while I do restaurant or can I incorporate their superhero into my restaurant or I can incorporate my restaurant into their superhero well maybe the superhero has to save someone at the restaurant correct and superheroes got to eat <laughs> you know what I'm saying so maybe the restaurant could decide hey if I what I think a superhero would eat is this you know and it might be something totally different than what like a true typical person would eat you know true so maybe combining the two but we don't want to guide that we want children right. to figure that out right we yeah. want them to sit and figure this out creatively together which is which are also problem solving skills yes. in addition to the negotiation the oral yeah. negotiation communication communication problems so so much more i think can be built from giving children this talking time mm -hmm. and if we take this time and we take it to another area of the room like let's say um, uh, blocks. Okay. Right. And we yeah. say to the children, why don't you sit or sit here and talk to each other about what you want to build? Maybe they can figure out one child wants to build a farm. Another child wants to build a city. Maybe they can figure out how to get the farm in the city near each other yeah. or how yeah. they can people from the farm in the city might co might work together. Or sometimes right. the people from the city go to the farm and sometimes right. people yeah. from the farm so go to the city. Now you're building roads. Yeah. You right. know, like, there you go. It's like the little house, the book, the little house that, I mean, like that's, but you won't know that unless you're letting them talk about it. You know, what's interesting that strikes me at the moment when I teach about play, which I do on the college level, there's three types of play that we normally teach about spontaneous, which comes from the children mm -hmm. in the moment guided play, which is sort of like the provocations that, I, we spoke, spoke about in our last episode. So if you didn't listen to that, please go back. Um, but guided play is sort of like, um, I'm going to offer you, maybe offer you something or offer right. you an idea. And then the children take it and run in different right. directions with right. it. And then there's teacher directed play where the adults play a very heavy hand in telling children mm -hmm. what they want them to do. Right. Right. And they give them instructions and the children are expected to follow directions. This seems to me to be a different type of play than those three basic types of play. Spontaneous is in the moment. It comes from the children, but it's in the moment. Yeah. Guided play and teacher-directed play really come from the teacher. Right. This, if we say to children, go over and plan together a little bit what you're going to do. It can take off in other directions while yes. you're there. Yes. That's fine. But start out with a basic plan. This is, I think, a child-directed play that doesn't fall under one of those three categories. I would agree with that because it's not very spontaneous either. Like it's, it's really planned out. I don't know what you would call that. I would call it ch children's planned play. Planned play. Planned play, but not yeah. by the adults, by but the not children. Planned by me, yeah. Right. Not planned by a teacher. When children, imagine this too. Children are sitting, you've given them time to talk about what they want to do. And children are doing all this talk mm -hmm. and, and coming up with ideas together and sharing together. Yeah. It enables us as the adults to observe and listen to their ideas. We then know, let's say it's dramatic play. We then know what they're planning to do in dramatic play. That gives us an idea of the story they're trying to tell through their dramatic play without going there and interrupting them and asking right. questions. I know what the yeah. story, or at least how it starts out. Yeah. I know the story is starting out this way. It enables me to maybe take a few minutes and put things in that area that would help and inspire their play, like the provocations yeah. from last time, Yeah. because it's based on their interests, which was one of the benchmarks. Right. Um, so it enables me to put things there, to know what they're doing, maybe to observe more deeply. I think it can be super beneficial, beneficial yeah. to the teachers. Very often children are over in dramatic play and I have to go there and figure out by asking them questions, yeah. what it is they're thinking, doing, what's the story right. that's happening over here. Yeah. But if they start to create the story ahead of time, 
and then you can just let them go. Right. You don't have to go in there and interrupt necessarily. You know, you don't have to be a part of it at all. It's already planned. You were maybe involved a little bit or at least observing during the planning time. So now you can just kind of let them smoothly go in. there. Right. You know, right. And if there are, let's say the children are planning something for the block area and they're going to need something from dramatic play to do that. It gives them a chance to realize that, mm -hmm. express it to each other and maybe cooperate in that way. Yes. Instead of going over and going, hey, I'm taking this I'm taking from the children this. in dramatic yes. play. I need this over here. I'm taking this. Yeah. The children who are in dramatic play will know ahead of time, maybe. Yes. I think it teaches a lot of skills that you're going to need as you grow older, right? So like, think about like when you're in your workplace, you often are like, hey, we're at this meeting. Oh, you're idea is this, you go with that group of people and now we're going to plan and we're going to gather materials and how are we going to implement this plan? And then we're going to go do it and we're going to cooperate with everybody in the workplace. It's very, it's very much preparing these children early on how to do that, how to negotiate, how to cooperate, how to work with people that might have different ideas. And they're not always going to get that. It's something we have to give them early on. I think it can build so many real mm -hmm. life skills. Yes. Yes. I also think it's a way better use of your large Meeting group time, time. Yeah. <laughs> than, than what has traditionally yeah. been done. So I just want to propose that. And I want you all preschool peeps to think about that. Think about what's been more traditionally done and think about how many skills the children build by saying to them, okay, let's talk about what's going to happen here today. Yeah. And let's talk about what's going to happen there today. But it, I think it's also really important that the children know that they can depart from that idea. They're not right. bound you're to not, it. So, yeah, you're not bound by a contract. Be like, oh, you plan block area. You're stuck there now. <laughs> you know, or like, you or, planned to build a train station in the block area, but now you're not building a train station. Right, right. So I, but I think children in that age, you know, they're very concrete thinkers. So yeah. my concern, and, and I want to think about how we can get around this, is that if the children think, we'll go back to dramatic play, if the children say, when we're playing dramatic play, let's play restaurant. Okay, let's play McDonald's because they love to do that. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So let's play McDonald's. Okay, I'll be the person taking the orders and you go sit at the table. Okay, we'll, we'll do that. Now, suppose they go over and they start playing this and then they decide they want to play something else. They need to know that's okay. Yes. So how are we communicating with them? You can do this or you can change your mind. Right. What do you think? You're you're saying like while they're over there, they decide not to play McDonald's anymore. Right. So like, but I think if we've taught them that they're communicating with their fellow classmates here, that if you at any point decide, hey, let's do this instead, that you communicate that to your your fellow dramatic play players here, your your the children that are there. So maybe part of the planning is having children talk about what they're going to want to do or have the children talk about that. It's when, when I want to play something else, here's what I'm going to say. Yes. When I want to switch it, here's what I'm going to, here's say. What I'm going to say. So if we as adults go over while they're planning and say, okay, if you don't want to play restaurant anymore, what are you going to say to each other? Yeah. Cause I think if you make that a normal part of the conversation, like that, like kind of when we're teaching them if there's a conflict like here's here's the words we're going to use here's what we're going to say that could be part of it that could be part of this talking time like if we decide we want to go in a different direction what do we say what do we do instead of it becoming a conflict we can say these words and we'll the other person will know that we're switching gears here mm -hmm. they also found when this was studied by the way let's say there's a group of children planning for playing restaurant in the dramatic play area. They realize they need menus. Now they're in the art area creating or menus. Their, their writing center, yeah. Or the write, or yeah, right, wherever you have writing, center. Yeah, they're creating menus. So now they're in, using other yeah. skills in another area. And let's say they realize we need a cash register. And let's say they realize that has to do with money and they're not yeah. just swiping cards. Yeah. 
Yeah. So they, they have to collect and you, you can, they can decide how much money do they need. Now they're using math skills, right. but there is, according to the studies, there's usually a crossover. So if they start planning for one area, it crosses over into other areas and you'll see them more smoothly flowing yeah. throughout your classroom, according to the research about this. Yeah. They also use literacy and math skills more when they plan. Because they realize yeah. things like we're going to need a menu. We have to yeah, write a menu. We need prices for things. Right. That makes a lot of sense because I think when it's just haphazard, you're not thinking that deeply about it. Right. They might say to the teacher, like, how do I write that this is a dollar? How right. do I write? Right. And so now we're doing numbers with them and, right. and, and math with them. So because they've had time to think it through, they use more of the content area skills like math, sense. science, yeah. um, literacy. Because you've given them the chance to think further into the project, right? It further into the play than they would have normally. Right. You have to give them that chance. Right. Yeah. And then you also get to see, are there ideas building? Do they have sequential ideas? Right. Are there ideas building upon an original idea and how logically they're doing that, which speaks to their cognitive development? Right. Because right. if you do this on a daily basis, say, and one day they're playing McDonald's and now they, they've elevated their restauranteering skills, right? <laughs> You're going to see that, that projection, that trajectory, right? And that's beautiful to see. <laughs> they've they've <laughs> elevated their restauranteering skills. So now I hear them yelling things like in the bear, like corner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you don't, if folks, if you don't watch the bear, highly recommend. <laughs> um, all right. So, so I hope you rethink that large group time, because it can be spent in these very beneficial ways. Yeah. Start them out together. Remember the purpose of large group is just to create community. When we ask children to do this, we are right. creating community. Right. So think about how you can give them this time. And then really, I encourage you to really listen carefully and observe what they're doing. Cause I think you're going to learn things about them that you didn't know before. Yes. Yeah. Right. Let us know how it goes by contacting us through howpreschoolteachersdoit.com or our Facebook page, How Preschool Teachers Do It. Yeah. All right. Also, feel free to go and check my Instagram, which is at Cindy Terabush. I've been putting reels and things that people seem to be enjoying on the social media. Or sign up for the app. Or sign up mm -hmm. for sign the up for Spaces the by Wix app, mm -hmm. where you will get uh, access to these episodes, both audio and video and video directly. And I do post the videos over the weekend. So people who are on the spaces by Wix app actually get to see our videos ahead of yes, the people who go early, to YouTube early access early. There's access. also like forums there and ways you can discuss things with us directly. So go check that out. Correct. Yeah. All right. Now that we've given you a bazillion ways to yes. communicate with us, <laughs> encourage the children's communication having to do yeah. with what they're going to play. And we will catch you next time on the podcast. Thanks.